Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting problem. We have x plus 1 over x equals 2 cosine alpha, and we're supposed to evaluate x to the fifth plus 1 over x to the fifth. So this problem is kind of general in some sense. I'll also show you some specifics at the end. It's general because you can change the value of alpha, and obviously the answer is going to depend on alpha. So it's going to be kind of like a function of alpha or in terms of alpha. Make sense? Okay, great. And let's go ahead and take a look. I'll be presenting different approaches. I'm not necessarily going to call them first, second, third method. Uh, you decide. Uh, but let me show you what I'm thinking. So first of all, when you get a problem like this, and you, if you work with polynomials, especially with something like x plus 1 over x, you probably thought about squaring both sides, cubing both sides, you know, so on and so forth, right? Obviously, you can raise both sides to the fifth power, which would be kind of messy, but you can do that too. And that's probably another method that I'm not going to mention or not do here, but you get the idea. So here's what I'm going to do. Make a common denominator. So let's go ahead and make a common denominator here. That gives me x squared plus 1 over x equals 2 cosine alpha. Okay, And then I'll cross multiply x squared plus 1 equals, I can write it as 2 cosine alpha times x, but I like to write it as 2x cosine alpha or 2x times 2 cosine alpha. I don't, I don't know, whatever. You hopefully get the idea. The coefficient of x is 2 cosine alpha. Okay, we could probably write it this way too. I just want to avoid, uh, I don't want to mix them up. Okay, so that's my x uh, value or the coefficient of x. Let's put everything on the same side so we can kind of uh, put this in parentheses. And that's kind of nice because that emphasizes the fact that uh, negative 2 cosine alpha is the coefficient of x. And guess what? This is a quadratic equation. You can solve it. I'll show you that. But be first, let me try something else. I'd like to complete the square, right? How do you complete the square? So I want to turn this one into something that will be helpful. And as we know from trigonometry, sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha is equal to 1. But have you thought of replacing 1 with that? Probably not. But let's do it. It's kind of backwards, I know that. But, and let's write it backwards too, because everything is backwards these days, right? So I replace 1 with cosine squared alpha plus sine squared alpha, and then guess what you get from here? Something super duper interesting, in my opinion. You may or may not agree. So here's what I'm going to do. Replace the 1 with that, and this is my quadratic. Now, I want you to focus on this piece. Take a look at this, and take a very hard look. Don't you appreciate that? What is that? That is a perfect square. And if you got it, perfect. If you didn't, that's fine too. So we this is x minus cosine alpha squared. Beautiful. Plus sine squared alpha. Well, let me write it as sine alpha squared. Same thing equals zero. Hmm. If x and alpha and everything here is real numbers, then the sum of squares equals zero only implies one thing. What is that? It means that everything in the sum is zero. So this must be zero, and this must be zero. But what does that mean? It means x is equal to cosine alpha, and sine alpha is zero. So what is sine alpha is equal to zero means? It means alpha is zero or pi, right? Well, if uh, alpha is zero, then cosine alpha is going to be one. So x is going to be one, or x is going to be negative one. Does that work? Hmm. When I plug in 1, like 1 plus 1 equals 2 cosine alpha, gives me cosine alpha equals 1 half. And then I can go ahead and plug it in and get a numerical value. But that's not what I want. I want to do something more interesting. Yes, this seems to be working for reals, but suppose for reals. I mean, this works for reals. Uh, but uh, suppose, let's make it more interesting and go to the complex word. I know some people don't like complex word, but come on. We're talking about something that doesn't even exist, right? Like I. Does I exist? Well, it exists in electronics, in science, in so many different areas. But let's just say it's not real. Anyways, so suppose X is complex or and not non-real. Okay? What happens? So I can kind of write it as uh, cosine beta plus I sine beta. Why did I use a different angle? Because I don't know what X is. I'm just using a different angle. And how do you find the reciprocal of a complex number in polar form? Easy. 
just replace uh, beta with negative beta because that's what it is. So you get cosine beta. Here's a shortcut for you minus I sine beta. We could maybe talk about it later on in a different video, why this is happening. But guess what? When you add these up, something mathematical happens. X plus one over X, these two cancel out. We end up with two cosine beta. Wait a minute. Didn't you say X plus one over X is two cosine alpha? Yes, I did say that. The problem said that. But how come it's equal to two cosine beta? Well, they're both true. So think very simple, like don't get into any complications. Even if you do, this will still be correct. But let me just simplify the process. This indicates, and doesn't it indicate in some sense, at least that's one of the solutions, beta equals alpha. They are the same. So x is, well, I just assumed it was cosine beta plus i sine beta, which means x is cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. Okay, fine. So what? Well, here's the thing. Let me put this guy over more to the left so I can kind of take the fifth power. That's what I'm going to do now. And 1 over x, obviously, is going to be, 1 over x is going to be cosine alpha minus i sine alpha. Hopefully, you learned the trick. Now, if you raise both sides to the fifth power, I, man, I can never say this, the moi or the moiver. I mean, hopefully, you get the idea, something like this. I hope I got it right. So it's easy. The, the MUWA, the formula said, the, I'm just going to call it DEM. This formula says uh, you can just multiply the angle by 5 and you'll get the answer. But don't get me wrong. If there was an R, we would also raise it to the fifth power. But since R is 1 here, R to the fifth is also 1. Because notice there is no R here, right? That's 1. And the same thing goes for 1 over x to the fifth power. That is going to be cosine 5, 5 alpha minus i sine 5 alpha. If I add these up, because remember, I'm trying to add the four, uh, fifth powers, right? These two cancel out, and I end up with the following. The sum of these two powers will be 2 cosine 5 alpha. Hmm, that's interesting. So what is that supposed to mean? It means if x plus 1 over x is 2 cosine alpha, to raise that to the power 5, you just have to change the angle, the two stays, and we're all good. Make sense? Cool, cool. Let's take a look at something else. Now, we have the quadratic equation, right? I mean, why do you have to complete the square? You don't have to, do you? No, 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 we don't have to. Let's go ahead and do the following. Let's just solve it with the quadratic formula. It's going to be fun, right? What's the coefficient of x? Remember, I told you. It is negative 2 cosine alpha. What is negative b? 2 cosine alpha plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Remember the quadratic formula. b squared is going to be 4 cosine squared alpha. Minus 4ac is going to be 4, subtract 4, and 2a. Now, notice that uh, this is, uh, what is that? 2 times, or can I just take the 2 out? Inside, I have cosine squared alpha minus 1. Uh-oh, that's not good. It's actually good, because that's going to be complex. Cosine squared minus 1, what is that? 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared. Cosine squared minus 1 is the opposite. So this is going to be negative sine squared. That's why the complexity comes in. Now, sine squared is not negative. Negative sine squared cannot be positive. So this has to be written as follows. And here comes the, the beauty of the math. It always comes up. But we can write this as 2 sine alpha multiplied by i. And then when you divide by 2, I can write the x as cosine alpha plus minus i times sine alpha. But wait a minute, you just assumed it was cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. Guess what? It doesn't matter because x and 1 over x are always reciprocal, so they're just going to switch around. So it doesn't matter. Once you get the x value, raise it to the fifth power, and boom, you got the answer. Specifically, remember I told you that I was going to show you specifically, oops, I just couldn't spell it right, what happens, right? So set cosine alpha equals one half or alpha equals pi over three, like 60 degrees. Then you're going to get x plus one over x equals two times one half, which is one. And x to the fifth plus one over x to the fifth is going to be, oh, I just can't write x to the fifth. It's going to be two times cosine five alpha, which is five pi over three. And guess what? Five pi over three and pi over three have the same cosine and that's going to be one again. And this brings us to the end of this video. I want to thank you for watching. 
I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.